Hello, I'm Dr. Jen. I'm really glad to have you in the den with Dr. Jen. <laughs> so what are we doing here today? We will be learning how to build our sexual energy. We'll learn what the word acomoclitic means and what one thing when sniffed by men will kill their sexual arousal. So our guest today is Jim Chiltis, who's going to talk to us about sexual energy. Jim is a licensed acupuncturist and certified in restoration massage therapy. He has his bachelor's in molecular, cellular, and developmental biology, it's a mouthful, and a master's in traditional Chinese medicine. He has a specialty in functional endocrinology and blood chemistry. He's also the father of two and married to his high school sweetheart, who we have here in the audience with us today. Yay! <laughs> so, welcome, Jim. Thank you very much. So, it really sounds like you have a, very much a mix of Eastern and Western approaches to medicine in the work that you do, yes? I certainly do. Okay, so overall, how is your work spe um, specifically connected to sexual well being? Well, I have a specialty in functional endocrinology. Which means? Which means the study of hormones. <laughs> okay. Um, functional meaning we're going to try to kind of stimulate the hormone system naturally when we can do that. Oh, nice. Um, and I find that's a really great, you know, first avenue to take before a replacement model. Okay. Um, so I can use, you know, these very ma mainstream, modern, cutting-edge tools to evaluate these hormone systems, look for uh, various roadblocks in, in people's health, like blood sugar and you know, liver disharmonies and thyroid disorders and, and really screen for things that might be hindering the sexual experience of a person. Um, and I can couple that then with the ancient modalities of traditional Chinese medicine. So um, it's amazing what people come in for and then what they end up getting treated for in the end. You yeah. know? Sometimes it's neck pain and then we end up working on, on sexual stuff. That's awesome. I mean, and all the stuff you mentioned too, mostly we wouldn't think any of those things are connected well, to know. our sexuality and our, our sexual functioning. So what is your understanding of sexual energy? Um, well, I, I, I like the Western medical thing, and so I, I always look for the, the very obvious signs, but I prefer to look at it through the traditional Chinese medical model because okay. it's cooler. It, it sounds cooler, <laughs> it, and it's very picturesque. These are ancient people who didn't know what estrogen was or testosterone was, they, they couldn't see it. And so they, they used imagery and they used things from the environment to relate internally, which, oh, which makes a lot of sense. So you get these very you know, difficult to understand concepts and you, you simplify them and it becomes very picturesque and easy to understand. So to answer your question, you know, sexual energy really is that, that connection, that dichotomy between kidney energy Okay. Every organ has a different energetic system and, okay. and, a, and, a, and a different emotion and a different quality. So the kidneys are really our, our storehouse, our what they call jing. It's our vital essence. It's what blossoms during puberty and it's what starts to wane as we get older. Right? Okay. So it makes sense. Uh, and you would need to have a lot of kidney energy, kidney chi, to have a healthy sexuality. Hmm. Now you can do that, but is it healthful? Is it meaningful? Is it even successful if you don't have a good heart energy as well? Ah. And heart, as I think everyone kind of can feel right now, is our spirit, you know? So what good is sex if you're not feeling it, right? And what good is feeling it if you can't do it? So you really need to have this, this connection happen. And the Chinese medical model has this meridian system, and, you know, the, they're, they're these energetic connections. So there's meridians that connect kidney to heart and, you know, make these really beautiful um, interactions. So that's what happens when you, you have an orgasm, really. I mean, you're getting that rush of kidney chi and con connecting oh, to your heart chi. Yay, kidney chi. So what we can do as acupuncturists <laughs> is really help open those channels and find the blockages. Okay, so yeah. for a lot of women, low desire is a complaint yeah. um, and a concern. And so what if a woman showed up to you um, and wanted to bring some sexual vitality back to her life, what would you do or what would you recommend, like very kind of practically and concretely, what sure. would you do? 
Um, to be quite honest, all medicine aside for a second, masturbate more. Nice. Yeah, I, I, don't, I think, um, and I'm not shy of asking people about that um, or Good. just their sexual experience in general. Um, I think that it, that helps empower women. Us men, we have no problem with that, really. But I, I think that helps Half you. Half of them are doing it right now. Helps you, you know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that helps um, a woman go through, go into a sexual experience with their partner um, more empowered, more in touch with Absolutely. what they want. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and not knowing that, you know, well, what do you get? So, but, but to answer your question about, about the medical thing, um, get a hormone panel done. <laughs> you, know, um, you know, I look at them a little differently than a Western medical doctor would. Um, but regardless, you know, we want to see what the picture is and if they can be tweaked in any way. Because, um, again, you might have the desire, but if the chemicals aren't there, then it's just not going to happen. Right. Um, but besides that, there's little tips you can do for yourself or with your partner. And, uh, there, you know, I mentioned this, uh, this Chong Mai Meridian. It's called the penetrating vessel, which sounds kind of fun. But, um, <laughs> and this is the one that connects the kidney and heart, right, to really uh -huh. open the, that internal flow. So there's a point right between the breasts, right on the middle of the, of the breastbone. Okay. And that's a very local, kind of a nice um, heart point, spirit mm -hmm. point. And there's a point that, unfortunately, we can't really do so much in America, uh, in my <laughs> clinical setting. And it's, it's a REN1, and it's basically at the perineum or the, you know, the taint. The taint. Men have it too. Yeah, right. <laughs> and so you can, you can stimulate them yourself. Or even better yet, have your partner and get some coconut oil and kind of trace those meridians down and, and really kind of connect those dots. So energetic foreplay? I don't know. That's you know, awesome. It's, uh, it's, it sounds not? incredibly sensual, too, the way yeah, you just said yeah. that with coconut oil. So Yeah, I think it's easy to get locked into like what sex should be and what, what foreplay should be, and it can be very mechanistic. But wow, isn't the sex so much better when you can really do something different and, and really charge yourself energetically? Nice. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jim, for this very, very much. energizing conversation and discussion. If you want to learn more about Jim and his work online, you can visit laurelacupunctursd.com. <music> Sexual fun fact. What one thing, if sniffed by men, will reduce their sexual arousal. I'll ask the audience. A woman's tears. More, yeah. Right. Did you read it? <laughs> you suck. Oh, you. All right, you get a thing of lube. Well, when I asked before, people said feces. Oh, that would do it. <laughs> they said baby powder. I thought these were all good. It is, it's women's tears. In a paper published recently in Science Express, scientists found that there are signals chemically encoded in tears and specifically, if a man sniffs a woman's tears, even if she's not present in the room, um, they'll experience lessened sexual arousal. Fascinating. <laughs> What's that word? All right, I got a word for you. A comma clitic. What's that word mean? Any ideas? A funny vagina, a funny clitoris? No, and because it sounds that way with the word clitic in it. What it actually is, is having a preference for or being aroused by hairless genitals. Well, in ancient <laughs> Egypt, this was a common practice to avoid having lice. In today's culture, I would say our younger generations are much more likely to be a comma clitic because of the trendiness of hair removal down there. So I want to thank you very much to Jim for teaching us about sexual energy. Yay. Thank you to our live audience for being here to talk about sex. Let's applaud you guys. Yay. And I want to direct you to a couple places online. First of all, undergroundfurniture.com. Uh, they are in San Diego's Pacific Beach, and they provided this sexy den furniture. And if you want to find me online, you can go to drjensden.com or on Facebook or Twitter at Dr. Jen's Den. So don't miss the shocking or silly outtake after the credits. And as always, be kind to yourself. <laughs>
Yeah, that's why I'm not giving you the word ahead of time. I was like, good, you guys yell all those things out and then you answer it. I'm like, you suck. That's gonna look good on the air. I'm like, you suck. <laughs>